Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, called for songs of loudest praise. How great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee. Grown to Good morning and welcome to prayer and devotion on this Thursday. Today is June the 9th and starting off today with Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Uh, that was the Brigham Young uh, vocal point uh, uh, acapella group. So um, I thought I'd try and see if I could find something else from their album. I played something from them the other day. So I hope you enjoyed that. I know it's a favorite hymn of many of you, so good morning and welcome. Let me say good morning to all of you. Uh, good morning, Barbara and Michelle. Welcome. Praying for both of you as we start this day. And Margarita and Donna, it's good to have both of you here holding you in prayer as well. Good morning, Daniel and Andrea. It's good to have you here praying for you today. And... Sorry. Marilyn. Good morning, Marilyn and Lisa. Welcome. Holding you both in prayer as we start this day as well. Good morning, Esther. And good morning, Blanca. It's good to have both of you here praying for you this day. And Vinette and Sheila. Good to have you both here praying for you. Good morning, Debbie and Betty. I'm glad you're here praying for both of you. And Rosetta and Barbara, I'm glad you're here as well, holding you in prayer as we start this day. And good morning, Georgiana and Janet. Uh, it's good to have both of you here as well, praying for you. Uh, 
was a little stormy this morning, but I think it's clearing and the clouds are breaking. So um, it should be a really beautiful day. It's good to be with you today. Today we are looking at Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, and I'm going to be reading specifically verse 4. So if you want to open your Bibles to Ecclesiastes 10, verse 4, um, there are, I know I said this the other day, there's a mother and fawn that tend to hang out around our front lawn in the morning. It's so beautiful and they kind of dance around, but I worry because I'm right on this main highway. So anyway, pray for the mother and, their fa and her fawn. <laughs> um, so our, our devotion today is called Calmness in Contrast. Calmness in Contrast. Uh, so as you open to Ecclesiastes 10, my name is Cindy Stauffer. I'm blessed to serve as the pastor at the United Methodist Church at New Brunswick, and it's good to start the day with all of you. Good morning, Augusta. Uh, I'm glad you're with us today. And Barbara, thank you for pr praying for the mom, mama and her baby. So let's look at Ecclesiastes 10 verse 4. It tells us this. If, if the anger of the ruler rises against you, do not leave your post, for calmness will undo great offenses. If the anger of the ruler rises against you, do not leave your post, for calmness will undo great offenses. So the devotion today is called Calmness in Contrast. There's no question that the entire world could use some collective calmness right now. It's difficult for any of us to stay even keeled in our daily lives if we spend even a fraction of our time reading headlines or listening to the news. Living a quiet, Simple life feels more of a battle than ever before. But God has never asked us to fight a battle on our own. We've always needed God, and we always will. How do we stay or how do we get into a state of calmness, to a place of, uh, to a place unaffected, by the harshness of the world around us. We begin by turning our focus to the little things, the simple little things. Instead of staring at the television, we try cooking a new recipe. When we are tempted to sit and scroll through the, through the, uh, through our feed, <laughs> we choose to instead sit and read a book that we've been wanting to start. It takes a second to redirect our thoughts and make a better choice, a quieter choice, a choice that will make our lives begin to feel simpler and more grounded. Calmness is a state that we can master with the help of God's ever-present spirit. It's not as impossible as it might seem. And if there's any hope of dialing back the screen time, the noise, and the negativity inside our homes is the best place to begin. When our lives display a calmness that stands in contrast to the world's chaos, the light of God shines a little brighter from it. Love's reflection is a little clearer in it. God's goodness flows a little easier through it. We can follow our hearts in the calm and the quiet, and maybe, maybe, 
little by little, our simple change of choices can start to change the world. So one of the um, things that we learn and focus on, especially in something called clinical pastoral education, uh, which is when uh, we work in the hospital uh, as a as a chaplain, but it's not just visiting people. We actually are in a class learning how to be a non-anxious presence, the non-anxious presence in ministry. It's not just in the hospital, it's in all places, but it isn't just it of being a pastor that that we that having a non-anxious presence is important it's important to have a non-anxious presence as a parent as a wife uh, as a sister as a daughter as a person in the community there is not enough non-anxious presences in our world today and for some reason, I think that we believe that the more we react and spin around, the more passionate we are about something, that somehow our reaction lets people know just how much we care about something. <coughs> I understand that, but I also understand when we are in the midst of chaos and confusion, when there is already heightened um, uh, heightened uh, anxiety in the midst of whether it's a family or a world situation, the more that we react and give into that, the less calm there is. And the less able we are to, to um, show the presence of Christ because Christ, one of the last things that Christ says over and over before he leaves is my peace I give you. To be a non-anxious presence is to live in the peace, oops, sorry, is to live in the peace that Jesus has given us. And what I like about today's devotion is they tell that, that we can begin to do this in little steps. There are things that we can do. So yesterday I was feeling a little, not, not majorly anxious, but there was something that was about to happen. and um, So I was waiting. I was waiting for people to come and I was waiting. Um, and again, you know, I, I had about 10 minutes, I picked up my phone and I started to scroll and I, and all of a sudden I thought, I don't, this doesn't feel good. It wasn't, there was nothing major in the feed that was anxiety producing, but I just thought, I'm not getting any peace from this. So I just put my phone down and I just started praying um, and asking God's peace in the midst of where I was. And uh, I didn't pray that long. I prayed for a short while, but I kept my phone down for the whole time. I felt so much better. Um, so, you know, sometimes it's these little choices that we make. You know, instead of, you know, sitting down in front of the the, the daily news that, that isn't bringing anything to us that we really need to know anyway, you know, turning it off, baking with our children or or cooking a meal with our husband or, or calling up our best friend uh, just to laugh and talk about things that, you know, bring us joy. Um, we have a choice to give in to the anxiousness of our world. We do. And it's not, it doesn't always have to be big choices. It can be the little choices that we make throughout the day. So today, where are the ways that you will seek out the peace of Christ in your daily walking and trust from our scripture today that calmness can lay great offenses.
to rest. Where in your life, in your home, in your work, in your community, can you become a non-anxious presence offering? And when you do that, what you are doing is offering the peace of Christ to others. So let's pray. God, we come before you today and we admit that too often we have allowed the cares and the worries and the anxiety and the fears of the world to um, take away our peace, to keep us from experiencing your peace. But what the world needs right now more than anything, and what we need more than anything, Lord, is your peace. And so today, as each person that's on this call, each person that listens to this call later, as we move throughout our day and encounter situations, help us to carry that peace with us. So that in each situation, in each conversation, in each encounter, we might not only experience your peace, but offer that peace to those around us. Lord, we thank you that in all situations that you are there. And when we cannot uh, seem to find the peace, help us to lean more fully on you, to find more opportunities to seek out your peace through scripture, through prayer, through intentional choices each day to push away the chaos and lean more fully on the simple peace, the overwhelming love that you offer us each day. We thank you, Lord. Help us to trust and lean more fully on you. We ask all of this in your name, Lord Jesus, as together we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So, where can you be uh, God's peace, uh, a non-anxious presence in, in the midst of your days today? God loves you, my friends, and so do I. Have a very blessed day, and I will see you back here tomorrow morning. Um, I'll see you then. Bye, friends.